Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here with a review of the Cheerson CX-30. Uh, this is kind of a phantom look quad. It kind of has that sort of uh, design and LED layout. It's got um, LED like bays here in each arm. Uh, and then he's got these prop guards. The prop guards are optional, though they screw on, so they're not exactly... Uh, super convenient to take on and off. Uh, they are pretty light though. I can't imagine they have too much effect on the flight performance. Maybe a little bit. Uh, it has these nice rubber landing feet though. I have found that the the pegs come off pretty easily. Uh, I know some people have glued them on to keep them on but um, just to kind of show it, I've, I've left mine unglued and they come off quite often, quite easily. I've almost lost them on several occasions. Um, it has a really large 500 milliamp hour battery. However, you still only get about six minute flights uh, with the prop guards on. I haven't even taken the prop guards off to test it. Uh, I can't imagine you'd get much longer uh, without them on, maybe six and a half minute flights. Um, so not super long flights for how big the battery is. I think just because, you know, it's, it's this, you know, plastic, big bulky frame. So it, it's fairly heavy for its, uh, for its size. Um, let's see, there's no LVC warning. So when you do run out of battery, it'll just kind of all of a sudden fall out of the sky. There's no blinking lights to warn you or anything. Uh, so you've got to be aware of your flight times and make sure to get it back to you before the battery dies. Um, but it is pretty stable. It's nice, uh, you know, good six axis. It, it has a good, you know, smooth flight characteristics and controls pretty well. Um, there are camera and Wi-Fi versions. Um, this one obviously doesn't have a camera on it, but there are some that have a camera underneath and some that you can control from the phone and I believe you actually get a Wi-Fi video signal back to your phone so kind of FPV um, I think that would be a better use of this quad it's not really a sport flying quad it's a little bit um, underpowered for its size so I think this would be better to you know keep it slow and kind of do filming with uh, so the version without the camera is feels a little bit pointless uh, I, I didn't really find it to be a you know particularly flat, a fast flying quad, so it would make more sense to film with it. Uh, it does come with a USB charging cable, a screwdriver to remove the prop guards, and a spare set of props. Um, the transmitter is the same design that I kind of complained about in the Flying Egg. It's just kind of a really weird shape. Um, though the sticks do actually feel pretty decent, they've got some, you know, good movement to them. They don't feel too, like, crunchy or anything. They've got nice, smooth, fluid movement. Um, but my main complaints are this, the trim system. Uh, so here for your, this would be your camera control if you had a camera on it. And this is your rate. So you've got two different rates, and this button switches between high and low rates. Uh, there's only one yaw rate, but it is a decent yaw rate, um, but it does not change between high and low rates. And then this is your left and right yaw trim on a dial here, and then on the right is your forward and backward trim, and then your left and right pitch trim. So it's just kind of weird to have these trim dials, um, but otherwise, you know, it's not a horrible transmitter. It feels okay. Um, but it does use the uh, JXD389 or the WL Toys V252 Pro protocol, so you can use either of their transmitters with it. Uh, so personally, I prefer to fly it with uh, the JXD389 transmitter. Um, oh, and you can do flips with the stock transmitter. You click the right stick, and then whichever way you move the right stick, it'll flip in that direction. Uh, let's see, what else did I have to say about it? Um, oh, the flip recovery is a little bit slow. I would imagine it'd be a little bit better removing the prop guards. Uh, but really, I think it's just because of the weight of the body and, um, you know, being fairly underpowered for its size. So it, it flips nice, but it just loses a lot of altitude after the flips. Um, the battery compartment is pretty 
awkward and tight so you've got this latch here that you've got to undo first and it, the battery barely fits in there so you've got to kind of smash the cable in let's try to get it in here and show you so you can see there's not much room left and you've got this huge battery cable so you kind of have to fold it over itself and smash everything in there to kind of get this battery bay closed again and then you've got this latch to try to deal with pushing down in there so pretty awkward to deal with getting the battery in uh, but once you've done it a few times you kind of get the feel for it and how you have to fold the wires to make it fit uh, so not horrible uh, just a little bit of an inconvenience uh, let's see, oh, there's no turning off the LEDs. The LEDs are on the whole time. Uh, and again, let's get a closer look. They, they do have a pretty cool, you know, they're on the arm here, and you can see them from the front. Um, you can't exactly see them from the top so well, but, you know, you're usually look, looking up at the quad, not looking down at it, so that's not that big of a deal. Uh, but you can't turn them off, but I doubt it would really make much difference in flight time anyway. Um, so yeah, I think, oh, and I, I haven't been able to f figure out any way to recalibrate it. I've used the method that worked for, um, some other Cheerson models and it doesn't seem to do anything. So I don't know if you can recalibrate the accelerometer on this or not. Uh, alright, well that's all I've got to say about it, so let's go take it for a flight. Alright, this is the flight review of the Cheerson CX-30. And I got it all bound up and ready to go, so let's take her for a spin. Let's see. All right, start off in low rates. All right, Let's see how the trim is. Looks like I need a little back trim. And a little right. Kind of try to get it trimmed out here first. I can never remember with this stinking dial trim if it's which way is forward or back trim. That looks like it's good enough. So I'll do some flying and low rates here. So a little bit slow on the yaw. So there's low rate yaw. Let's so yeah, no, that's high rates and that's as fast as the yaw gets, so not great on the yaw. And that's full pitch there, high rates pitch. So this isn't a super fast quad, like I was saying, this seems like it's more of a, you know, aerial video quad. Um, so I would suggest getting this with the camera, that seems like what it's really meant for. All right, let's try some flips. So yeah, slow on the recovery there. Flips decent, but you gotta give it a lot of throttle and some room to recover. You got a little squirrely on the recovery there. All right, let's, uh, let's try bumping in the prop guards here a little bit, see what happens. Well, not bad. like those are doing their job. So yeah, pretty slow on the yaw there. Can't really do funnels because <laughs> the yaw's not fast enough. And there went one of my rubber feet flying across the floor. I'll put that back on. Alright, let's uh, turn off some lights and see what these LEDs look like in the dark. Looks pretty cool. Red in the front, blue in the back. Not super easy to see. I'm not sure I would necessarily recommend this as a night flyer, but it is doable. Let's do a night flip. Whoa. <laughs> and I think I just lost a little foot in the dark. 
oh I see it though yep another another foot came off I'm glad I was able to find that in the dark all right well that's a pretty good flight review there the Cheerson CX30 again I would recommend getting it with the camera and using it as an aerial video platform uh, it's not exactly the best you know like sport flying quad uh, but I think it would work well as a camera platform all right, well, uh, check the video description for price and purchase link, and uh, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you next time.